Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Adam Balderstone, and it's just the two of us tonight doing The Shadow Whip, a 1971 Shaw Brothers movie. The Shadow Whip was directed by Lo Wei, the director of Big Boss and Fists of Fury, and stars Cheng Pei Pei as Yang Kai Yun. In this wuxia adventure story, grudges from the past unsettle Yun's idyllic life in the snowy mountains. There's obviously more to the plot than that, but that's the sort of basic bare bro- bones uh, story. So before we get into the the plot and what happens and all that, Adam, what were your first impressions of this movie? Uh, it's a beautiful looking movie when it first starts. I mean, you've got, I say it's nice snowy scenery, the opening scene with uh, the, this kind of caravan kind of moving along, could it go get supplies and the guy singing and everything. It just, just sets this, like you say, it's a nice kind of, idyllic mood to open it up before the uh, the bandits come along and and shatter the calm but uh yeah I, I i was i was i was just sucked into this movie right away yeah this I, this is a good i think it's a really solid sort of uh you know classic shaw brothers movie you were saying before the podcast that you, you thought this was like a good example of if you want to set shaw brothers expectations to sort yeah. of to and i think you might be right about that i feel like uh, one movie it kind of reminds me of is a film called The Golden Sword, which Lo Wei also directed. Um, there's something, I, there's a couple of snowy scenes in that movie, and there's, if I recall, there's a music number, um, and it just kind of, I don't know, just kind of, there are more sets in that one. Uh, one of the things that kind of makes this one a little bit unique is the amount of outside uh, uh, filming that seems to be occurring. And, yeah. And also the look, the location is, you know, you don't, you don't get snowy mountains quite as much as some of the other uh, locations. And so I think the snowy mountains really works. Um, but the, the story begins in, uh, near this uh, uh, town called Defeng, uh, and we see these bandits. We don't really know that they're bad. Well, the, we, they're bad guys. They're, they're, they're bad, bad guys on horseback. Ruffians. Yeah, they're I'll ruffians. Use the term ruffians for now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they read a sign and they say we're on the right path and they, they head off. And then we immediately jump to the guy that you're talking about. We see a caravan and we see uh, the uh, Cheng Pei Pei's character, uh, Miss Yoon. And she's traveling with a guy named Ursha, who is uh, sort of like her servant. And, mm-hmm. and he begins singing. And he's singing because they're on their way to town and they're about to buy supplies. And it's very much rooted. It's, and the song is all about like, you know, you know, live gooses list. and eggs and combs. And, and then, and then yeah. he kind of goes on a tangent about beautiful women. And, you know, but it's all yeah. about like the comforts of the village life and his, and his, you know, the most lofty thing he can really talk about are like the beautiful women that walk by him that he, he knows he's, that he's never really going to have any, spend any time with. He's going to marry the, marry one of them in his dreams. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's like it's it's the classic thing. If I heard that song without subtitles, it's like oh, it'd be imagining some you know deep and meaningful thing. And it's like oh, he's just singing his shopping list. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you get the impression that he's making it up as he goes along yeah. because eventually he starts saying, "Oh, I see a snow peaked mountain, and oh, there's a beautiful girl." And so, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it feels like he's making it up as he goes. And I think that song's also really important for stuff that comes down the road, and we'll talk about it when we get there. But mm-hmm. at the outset, it just kind of establishes, oh, they're, you know, they're, 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 you, you know that you're in sort of this remote village location where something as simple as, as a sewing kit is, 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 <laughs> is essential. It's like a, you know, he, he's, he's dreaming of things that most characters have easy access to in these kinds of films. Um, and so... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the next scene they get to Da Feng and uh, and and uh, the the riders that sort of, you know, well, I, I got to go lost over something. Those riders pass by their caravan and almost drive Ursha off the road. And Cheng Pei Pei has to um, has to restrain the cart with her whip. Uh, one of the one of the key features of this movie, if you didn't get it from the title, is that she uses a whip. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's got a, it, you know, there aren't that many movies that use it. So, uh, but, you know, she talks him out of his anger and then they, they, they arrive at, at Da Feng, but he sees their horses, uh, tethered out by an inn and he goes did, in. Did she talk him out of his anger? I kind of read it the opposite way. Didn't she say something like, oh, well, let's go. And he was like, mm, I don't know. 
but uh well i think he was I, complaining and she, and, and she was saying like let's just get we want to we just got to get oh next. okay i i misinterpreted actually i was the one that misinterpreted that scene i i i took it as her just nonchalantly being okay let's go after these people but you're right she's just going let's go as in because the then town. when they get there she's like okay you go get the wine and i'm gonna go get the food and she doesn't care about you know yeah no you're uh, right you're right i was thinking about my interpretation in the moment but it, in the context of the movie that makes more sense yeah and uh and so, you know, but when he when he gets there, those men are uh, at at uh, at the local inn, and uh, there's also another hero there, uh, played by uh, Yu Hua, and uh, that's Wang Jianxin, and he's seated at a table with them because there's not enough space. The inn is crowded as hell, and and Ursha goes in, and he you know he goes to give them he give give them a piece of his mind, and he starts he starts you know barking at them, and then one of the guys gets up. And he just kind of goes, he just sort of shoves his hand out and uh, Wang Jianxin, the Yu Hua character, pushes Ursha out of the way. And Ursha gets mad at, at, yeah. at, at uh, Wang Jianxin. It's like, what are you doing? I'm trying to, you know, settle this grudge. And, uh, you know, Wang just points to the pillar behind him and there's a palm <laughs> print in there. And so you immediately know, number one, you know you're in like a wuxia movie because there's like this mystical kung fu being used where the guy's able to get his palm print into the into the pillar from a distance um but uh but also you know ursha sort of suddenly realizes that this guy is way over his head he's not he's not capable of 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 dealing with them and yeah and eventually a fight breaks out between uh these three ruffians who we learn are a group called the serial trio and uh miss yoon the cheng pei pei character in wang Qianxin, who's the yu hua character and Eventually, uh, a guy named uh, Shu Shan Hu uh, intervenes at the urging of another person who's there named Chief Hong, and that's the villain played by Ku Fung. Um, and so, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts about these scenes? I don't want to just kind of plow through everything before you. Uh, no, this this was a great scene. I mean, just that the fight, <clears throat> you know, the, the lead up to the fight, you know, and uh, Ursha's confusion, you know, like thinking that. Wang Zhengqin is, is like part of the same group at first then realizing he isn't like you say in the getting angry at him for shoving him. And I mean, and then when the fight breaks out, it's just, this was just a really nice classic fight in an end scene, you know, with, uh, you know, and then Miss Yuan breaking into it at the last moment too. I mean, it, yeah, I, I, this was great. And so then after the fight settled, the, the serial trio, you know, they depart. They said that, you know, this is, this is settled for now. And then they, yeah. you know, but we know things aren't done. And uh, and Wang Shanxin, Yu Hua's character, he introduces himself and compliments Miss Yoon's whip technique. But he's really trying to find out where she learned the whip technique from because he's after a guy named the Shadow Whip, uh, you know, whose, uh, you know, personal name is uh, uh, Cheng Tian. And... And and he suspects that this guy might be her teacher, and and so uh, uh, you know she doesn't you know she either refuses to tell him or doesn't know, and he you know after she leaves he asks the innkeeper for more information. He's like, oh no, the, you know her, their their family name is Yang, so uh, you know it's and if this and if and if the shadow up was around, I would know. So you know it's it's not uh you know it's definitely not you're not that her her teacher isn't the shadow up. And I think she tells him that her teacher was just her uncle. Um, yeah. But by the end of the scene, both uh, Wang Jianxin and Chief Hong, Ku Feng's character, are intrigued enough to sort of follow and 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 pursue her. Um, and and you know they find out that she lives at, at Red Pine uh, Red Pine Village where they, they run a small inn. And uh, and so Miss Yoon and Ursha arrive at 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 their Red Pine Village inn, and you know. Uh, that's when uh, Chief Hong shows up uh, with his impressive blue hat and his really cold, <laughs> menacing stare. Uh, if you you know if you do not know that this guy is the villain at this point in the movie, you are not paying attention. He is he is clearly the bad guy. Um, yeah, well, they have they have the great way he shows up too, where Urshak kind of turns his back to put something away. Then he's suddenly there. You know, he just kind of makes this menacing appearance out of nowhere. And and I think they're trying to highlight his lightness kung fu technique because then he walks over the snow and he doesn't leave any footprints. And so yeah. I think that was sort of the purpose of that is he's just able to kind of you know show up out of nowhere. And uh, and and so uh, you know Ursha goes to uh, 
um, her uncle, who all, we only know him right now as Uncle Uncle Fang, but you know, it soon uh, spoilers. It soon becomes apparent that he is uh, Fang Chengtian, the Shadow Whip. Um, and uh, Ursha goes and tells him they have an odd guest, and he says, "Well, go go serve him," you know. And and uh, you know, Miss Yoon also uh, goes to her uncle and and reveals that she thinks he might be the Shadow Whip, and he looks alarmed. And asks her, you know, who who told you that? And and she mentions uh, Wang Jianxin, and uh, and and again, you know, it's we kind of know what's up, but we don't really uh, have a full explanation yet. And that's sort of what happens throughout the movie. We get sort of glimpses from everybody before we have the final revelation. Um, mm-hmm. But we definitely know the uncle is not everything that he appears to be at this point. Um, and then the, the camera sh- sort of shifts focus and we go to the, the serial trio again who, uh, who stop uh, Wang Xianqin on the road and, and, and you know, because they want to settle the score. And, you know, he says, OK, but like I'm in a rush, you know, you know, no more than like 50 strokes. And, and so, they, <laughs> so they begin fighting. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the action shifts back to uh, Red Pine Village. And here you have uh, Mrs. Yoon spying on Chief uh, Chief Hong. Uh, she pokes her finger through the paper window, which is a common thing in these movies. Yeah. And and he immediately leaps through the window after her, and she sort of retreats as he's doing that. And I think at that moment is when uh, Wang Jianxin arrives, sort of running away from, not, well, kind of in flight from the serial trio, um, and. You know, he, but but also we get uh, Wang Jianxin leaping over the wall, and then the serial trio leaping up on the wall. And I feel like there's a lot of. I'm pretty sure this is wire work at this point, and this seems like a, a pretty early wire work movie. Um, yeah, the wire work was a little primitive in this, so I don't think it really detracted from the movie. But uh, no, I, in I, fact, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm saying it was it was it, it wasn't as smooth as in some other movies, but it did the job. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I think this is pretty early. I don't know the history of wire working, but I know you don't tend to see a lot of it in like these late 60s Shaw Brother movies. And it's not yeah. until around this time that I, I feel like I start seeing a lot of wire work. And the early wire work is simple because it's, you know, I think I think it might not be quite as developed. Yeah. But I think it's still effective. It's a lot more effective than what you were seeing before, which tended to be things like trampolines. And, uh, yeah. And they would oh, also... Was... Well, so there were two techniques they used to use. They used the trampolines, which you could just totally tell they were doing because it, you could see the guy jumping as if they're jumping onto a trampoline. The other technique was they would reverse the film, so the guy would jump off of the wall. Yes, and yeah, that that's really obvious when it yeah. happens. So, but yeah, I, I, it worked. I mean, it's with, with wire work. There's always there's a little bit of buy-in you have to make anyway, so it wasn't like it in any way impacted on my enjoyment of the movie. But uh, it. But yeah, yeah. But, but go on. Sorry, yeah. that's my whole point. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, and so, uh, so, anyways, uh, you know, there, there's a whole, there's a whole exchange between the serial trio and um, and Wang Jianxin, the Hu Hua character, uh, that results in them taking out these things that look like metal bows, and in the subtitles they just say, you know, that they're going to use their serial bombs on him because he. Uh, you know, the, 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 they're just really getting sick of him. And, and, uh, and, and they, and they stay, they, they, they're almost like fire lances or something. I don't know exactly what they are, but the, but they're some kind of primitive firearm. And yeah, he said like he, he had heard of the serial bombs too, but he didn't seem to have heard of the serial trio. So I'm wondering, is the serial trio named after the kind of weapon they use or? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I have a feeling it's a subtitle issue. Uh, I've yeah. never been really clear. <laughs> on, but, That's exactly what I was thinking. But I, but I, but he says that he, he, he's heard of the serial bomb, but he's also, you know, heard that they have like, that they're very disreputable, the serial trio. So, oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. He had heard of them. You're right. You're he had right. heard of the bad reputation. So, um, yeah, but, uh, but anyways, you know, eventually that, you know, he, they, they shoot him with these serial bombs and he holds up a weird, clear circular disc. We're not really sure what that is, if it's the top of a table or if it's a piece of ice it's not. I, I, I've always been kind of unclear on what it is, but he blocks the attack with it, and then uh, and then uh, uh, Chief Chief Hung, the Gu Feng character, talks them into leaving, and 
he goes into the inn and he has a chat with uh with Wang Chian Chen and he basically tries to find out you know who he is and and Wang Chan Chen is very resistant to this. He doesn't want to reveal too much about himself. And and then they overhear uh, Miss Yoon speaking to her uncle. And he leaps out again and goes running after the uncle on horseback. Or the uncle's on horseback. He's on foot. And uh, and and then once again we have uh, Miss Yoon and Wang Chan Chen together. And he just, you know he tells her, oh, I was you know I, I was I was hoping to, to to find you. You know I wanted to, to meet with your uncle. And she's like, oh, so you really just want to meet with my uncle, don't you? You don't want to meet with me. And <laughs> the, and and uh, but she eventually reveals that her uncle is probably the guy he's looking for because she grows suspicious that he is after uh, the shadow whip for revenge. And she says to him, what has my uncle Fong ever done to you? And then he's like, oh, so he is your uncle. And and so he clearly has a sense that this is probably the guy he's looking for. Um, but, you know, we, we, we learn we learn over time that he's not necessarily is, uh, um, you know, he's not he's not the bad guy that the serial trio or any of these other people are. Um, and so he 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 ends up uh, saying, hey, you know, just tell your uncle to meet me at uh, the Guangyi Inn at the Fung Town. And, yeah. and, and so she, you know, she, I don't think, I don't think she gives him an affirmative on that, but she eventually does relay the message. Uh, and then, uh, Ursha comes up to her and complains about the, uh, everybody busting up the place. And, and this is important. The last thing she says to Ursha before she goes is shut up. And then, <laughs> and then she uh, goes to find her uncle and she finds her uncle fighting in the woods with, um, the chief Hong character and the, uh, the serial trio uh, show up uh, a little later. Uh, but when she's there, her, her, her uncle tells her to go away. And, uh, you know, she, she pretty much follows orders, but, but she tells him that Wang Chen Chin is uh, at the uh, uh, Guangyi Inn in the Feng waiting for, her, uh, waiting for him. And, uh, and then the, uh, and then, you know, she departs and then the serial trio show up and, uh, uh, you know, we get a nice battle uh, between the whip and the sword and, and uh, uh, Feng uh, Chang Tian, who's played by Tian Feng, uh, eventually escapes to the, chi- the trees. And then at that moment, uh, Chief Hong signals to his people that uh, you know they're to go north and hunt down uh, Feng Chang uh, Chang Tian. So I don't know, up to I this always point, like the firework signals; they're always a favorite of mine. But uh... did you have any thoughts on these scenes? I know I've been kind of blowing through them, but ah. Uh... Uh... Let's see. No, I mean I'll I'll shout out when I have things to say. I okay. Have, so let's keep going. All right. So then the next uh, the next part of the movie is um, uh, this is one of my favorite scenes. This is when uh, Miss Yoon goes back to the village and she finds Ursha has been stabbed. He's been uh, yeah. And I'm not. I've never been clear if it's a sword or a spear because it's got something wrapped around the top of it that makes it look almost a little bit like a spear. But when you look at it, it looks sword like to me oh okay um, i took it for a spear but i i, I have not seen my, it as many times my eyes as... might just be bad at this point um but uh but he, but ursh is very dead and you know she you know sort of thing who could have possibly killed you and then she she goes in to walk into uh into the inn and the, and a couple of spears poke through the through the gate and when she gets inside there's there's the uh the 16 bandits of yan yun are waiting for and they're led by this this really uh, tough bearded looking fellow who uh who 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 basically says to her you know you know like she comes in and she, i think she accuses them of being bandits or something and he says well your uncle's the worst bandit of them all and yeah. so we're only getting glimpses of what's going on here so far but but uh but a, a, t- a terrible fight breaks out in the end they ever surrounded with like they got like a, like a circle of spears up against her up against her neck and she has to fight her way out and uh, her uncle shows up and, and helps rescue her, and and he tells her uh, uh, to to go to go to the um, the inn and meet uh, Wang Jianxin, uh, and and he'll catch up. And uh, and so I don't know what do you think of this fight scene because it's a pretty it, number one it's a very whip heavy scene so huh. yeah it is no it was a, a very solid scene and uh, and I wrote this before this scene too the. Uh, I thought I thought Urshaw being killed landed effectively. I mean, he was kind of a endearing kind of 
comic relief character. And I, so it's like when he died, it was like, oh, not Ursha. I didn't. That's kind of a bummer. Well, uh, yeah, that's that. That had the effect they were going for. Well, I think again, the musical number had a big played a big role there because you you remember Ursha because of that yeah. musical number and the things he's talking about they're just simple comforts like you just sort of you can kind of you kind of can appreciate what Ursha's all about and he doesn't seem like a you know he seems like a pretty uh, innocent person and mm-hmm. and a very simple person and so you just kind of have a little bit more empathy for him when this yeah, happens and, oh go ahead he's the first character in the whole movie you really identify with so <laughs> And then, and then on top of that, the, her last words to him were "shut up." Uh, I know. And so, I know. and so, uh, so yeah. But but I thought the whip, the whip fighting in this scene is is outstanding. You see both of them using the whip, and I gotta say, like I, I don't know much about whip use, but to me, it looks like they didn't just hand them whips and say just do whatever you think you want to do. I feel like they Swing got proper around. training. I, oh I, yeah. They, like they were like you can see like I was really focusing, and you can see them wrap the the whip around things. I mean, and I know in certain scenes, the guys are grabbing the whip to make like, you know, to make it more effective (laughs) when it gets their neck and stuff, but they're legitimately whipping around things. And you know, and uh, lady Chow Fung's not here, but she was saying to me in a message before that she thought it was, you know, very precise sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the whip is a very complicated weapon and it was impressive to see them use it that precisely in these fight scenes. Uh, and I, I'm inclined to agree with that. I, and I think it just looks cool. It's got a, a really nice... Yeah, movie. it's kind of surprising there aren't more movies where it's used because, I mean, this is such an early one. It's surprising that, you know, as things went on, there weren't occasional things where people brought this back more because it is, it is just very, very uh, visually interesting in a scene. And uh, and I'll have more thoughts on the fights, but, I, but just to kind of, you know... Uh, move things along, I suppose. We then have uh, the scene at the uh, at the uh, Guangyi Inn in Defeng Town, and this is where the. I mean, and I should say this is at the point in the movie where we really are kind of building up to the to the uh, you know to, to the to the climax. Like this is where things yeah. really start cranking up, and she goes to Wang Jianxin's room again. This is the Yuhua character, and uh, he thinks that she's her uncle. She sort of sneaks up to the window, and he stabs to the window. And the lights are all out inside, and she leaps through, and you know says, "I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not Feng Cheng Tian." And he and he turns he turns on a candle. That candle, by the way, really illuminates that room tremendously. <laughs> they had some fun. really yeah. powerful yeah. candles back then. Yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> but but he he lights a candle, and uh, and 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 he and he explains to her, uh, you know, that look, you know, like, I'm. You know, I'm the nephew of uh, of, of a guy named Yang who ran the Zhuan Wu sh- uh, security company. And, and again, sh- security companies or escort agencies, whatever you know, they're, they're these common things in in, in this genre. Uh, and uh, you know, the reputation was ruined. Uh, and uh, when 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 you know when he says her uncle uh, stole the uh, um, stole some jewelry from them that was worth like three hundred thousand taels and and killed killed his uncle yang and so he wants to settle the grudge uh yeah. but he says you know he's, he doesn't have any you know he does it's not against her he doesn't have like a an issue with her so he does you know he's, he's being very sort of uh genteel in this scene and uh and 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 so uh you know unfortunately uh uh shan hu has has, has has alerted chief hong to um to the fact that she's here and the whole place is surrounded by Chief Hong and his men. Um, and so uh, uh, Wang Jianxin goes up to the window and he and he says, he says, OK, I have her here. We're coming down. And he throws like a, a, a flaming brazier at them. And then they they leap out the window and try to fight their way out together. And it's a term. This is a really good battle scene. I think it's like it's, this is like a classic. Again, I'll get more into this after we go over the plot. But this is like when when Shaw Brothers really kind of has one foot in like the swashbuckle and one foot mm-hmm. in the wuxia and so you get like a really you get a there's a lot of gristle in the sound effects of, of these <laughs> fights and uh and, I, and there's this one beautiful moment where yu hua uh i think it's yu hua maybe it's the jing pei pei character but i think it's him uh there's a sword that's on the ground and he just kicks it and it flies right into a guy and impales him that was great yeah, yeah i love that moment <laughs> and, uh, and i think I, I at some point we see people getting cut in half with the whip that might have been the previous scene but you know, we, we get we get a little bit of bloodshed, um, 
and they and they and they fight their way out of the inn and the fight sort of spills over into the roadside and they're they're sort of hounded by these guys in the nighttime you know and uh and and eventually uh you know they they uh uh they conf- they're sort of confronted by chief hong and mm. uh and uh and he, and he says you know where's your father and she says you know i'm i'm not his daughter my surname is yang and that surprises him he gets like a look of surprise and anger and he uh and he attacks her and and Wang Qian, Qian Shen is kind of like, wait a second, why are you trying to kill her? Like she didn't do anything to you, and uh, yeah. and and the battle continues. And uh, he he uh, and and also during this, um, uh, Chief Hong kind of figures out who uh, Wang Qian Shen's teacher is, and uh, you know he you know because he reveals that he's the nephew of Yang, and and tries to convince Chief Hong that he's also after this guy. But you know, he's just trying to reason with him, and and there's this kind of cool shot where you see this a lot in this period in Shaw Brothers, but where they're sort of walking back and the camera's following them, and they're sort of tactically withdrawing, and then yeah. at that point, that's when the Shadow Whip returns, uh, her uncle, and he's got horses, and you know, he he helps them escape, and they 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 they, they hightail it back to the village, and this is where we get the sort of great scene where. He brings them back to his chamber, and initially Jiang Xin draws a sword and tries to get him to admit to his crimes. And, you know, he says, look, I've been living here in seclusion just to protect this one person. And they're like, who? And he's like, you know, Mrs. Miss, you, Miss Yoon, you. And, and, uh, and you know, uh, Miss Yoon is very surprised by this. And so he says, I, you know, i got to show you something. He takes them into an underground tra- chamber, and there they see a shrine. And he says, this is the shrine of your parents. Your parents were uh uh you know chief yang and his wife of the uh juan juan wu security company and uh and she you know this is you know it's a very emotional moment for her so she begins to cry and she bows before the shrine and then he says but you know there's more i have a book over here that i've been you know uh sort of collecting all my thoughts into because i i you know there's a very complicated situation and you know if you did if you know just look look through this book where i've sort of explained everything and and they look at the book, and then that leads to a flashback scene, and we learn that uh, that her uncle uh, used to be sworn brothers with Chief Hong, and he was approached by uh, Chief Yang uh, at Chief Hong's urging to help him transport three hundred thousand taels worth of jewelry and the family of officials, uh, you know, to the north, and. You know, he, he, you know, so he basically was he came into this on Chief Hong's recommendation. And so, you know, everything's fine. He agrees. Uh, Miss Yoon is like six or something and she's even there and she goes up and bows to him. And 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 later that night, he he hears one of his men reports to him that the, the 16 bandits are planning to attack the caravan. And so he says, OK, I need to go and warn Chief Yang. And he rides to uh, I think it's Anpu. At, at, to an inn where uh, Chief Yang is staying, and the whole place is on fire. And there's a guy dressed all in black fighting exactly like uh, like Uncle Fang fights with the with the whip, but he's got a mask on. And uh, he eventually kills Chief Yang, and uh, uh, you know the the guy in the mask kills Chief Yang, not um, not Uncle Fung. And uh, Uncle Fung finds um, Miss Yoon in a in a flaming room and rescues her. And then as he's escaping, before he can really sort of explain things to people, he overhears that they, they've all concluded that this is the work of the Shadow Whip, him. And, and so he's effectively been framed, and now he has to go out in the run. And so we get a, yeah. this all gets tied up in a nice bow, and immediately, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wang just you know, accepts the story and, 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 and even sort of figures out who 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 was probably the man in the mask? And yeah, the, the suspiciousness of uh, the previous scene with Chief Hong. Yeah. I was like, well, huh. Yeah, so it was <laughs> that, and it was that he points out, hey, you know, Chief Hong wasn't anywhere in you know during that 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 flaming battle at, uh, at Ampu, so it must have been him. And yeah. and so I they like, just. I, Oh, go ahead. I, say, I, I like the use of the book for the flashback too. He's illustrated his story, you know, and everything, and uh. It kind of it kind of set that up earlier. The first time we see him, he's painting, you know. So it's uh, <laughs> but uh, well, it's, it's cool. just uh, oh, go that? ahead. No, go ahead. Say, no, it's like it's 
it's it's somewhat artificial, but I really liked it anyway. It's the, uh, it was just a great technique. The art, and I don't know how far this art goes back, but when I read fan translation of Wuxia, there's usually accompanying illustrations, and it reminds me a lot of those kinds of illustrations oh, really? that tend to be. But again, I don't know how far back that kind of art goes, so I don't yeah. know if it was you know prevalent at this time. Um, but it does definitely remind me of what I see now when I'm reading fan translations. But they come up with a cool plan. They say, you know, okay, so let's use this soft spot against him. And <laughs> let's uh, let him think that she knows that he did it and then gauge his reaction. And, and so, you know, they go outside and she sort of confronts Chief Hong before everybody. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and she says, you know, I'm the daughter of Chi Yang and I'm here to to avenge my father and people are skeptical initially like well can you prove that you're the daughter of chief yang but a couple of people are like well she looks a little bit familiar and 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 again even though these are robbers and things like that there you still get the sense that there's like a right a mix of righteous people in here who don't want to you know who don't want to uh kill the wrong person and yeah. uh you know up until now you haven't had this sense of these people but now you're starting to realize that chief hong might just be the bad apple kind of uh you know leading them uh, so, uh, so she says, uh, you know, I know I saw the murderer. I know who he is. And, uh, um, uh, and, and, uh, and then she says, uh, the one who killed my father was chief Hong. And, uh, and, and, or actually I, sh I should say, I should backtrack a little bit. She, when she says, I saw the murderer, I know who he is. Chief Hong attacks her immediately. And she jumps up onto a roof. And and they're like, whoa, slow down. Let let her talk. Let yeah. her talk. And she, you know, she's like, you know, like, what have I done to you, Chief Hong? Why are you, you know, why are you going after me? And and then she says, you know, it was Chief Hong. He was the one who did it. And and he says rubbish. And, and she's like, no, no, no. I was young, but I managed to see your face. You and it's a really great scene. She's like, you look so murderous, and you you sprang from the fire, and you killed one person, then another person, then another yeah. person. And, and this great line where Chief Hong starts laughing, and he says, "That's so crazy. I wore a mask." And so yeah. he just he just accidentally blurts out his guilt. And uh, and again, everything's sort of tied up in a nice, neat bow. But I think it it just works. It's just like perfect even though it's kind of very overly convenient um, yeah well, in fact yeah as soon as she started lying and making up this story about what happened you know oh i saw and this happened this happened i thought oh well the only way he can yeah i saw exactly where i was going the only way he can contradict her is to admit he was there so <laughs> and uh and and then uh and then uh you know Big fight breaks out. Chief Hong starts killing people left and right. People yeah. sort of approach him to reason with him. He's hacking off limbs, and and we get we get another nice fight scene. And uh, if, if Chief Hong tries to flee with his with his great lightness kung fu, but he's not fast enough, and uh, and uh, um, and Wang spears him through the air uh, right after uh, uh, Miss Yoon catches him with her with her uh, with her whip. So it's a ni I, I like that 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 the whip and and both of the characters sort of combine their attacks to get them. That's a, a, I thought a nice way to end it. And, and the movie ends with Miss Yoon, uh, uncle Fong and, uh, Jian Shin, uh, leaving together on horseback through the beautiful mountains. And we, we get the impression that they're probably going to be starting a life together somehow with, uh, you know, you know, we don't know what the situation will be, but it's an optimistic note to end the movie on. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, any any afterthoughts on 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 on, the, on that scene on anything that happens yeah. in the movie? Well, I've talked before how a lot of these movies you can't be sure how much happiness and tragedy you're going to get at the end. I actually felt through this whole movie, I'm like, this movie's going to have a happy ending. I was, it just something about it. It's just got it's just got a really pleasant tone to it. I mean, aside from you know one character getting speared, which is unpleasant, but. Uh, other than that, I so yeah, it was it it you know the, having a happy ending on this worked for me. It, it deserved it. And uh, there are a couple of important notes too I want to make. Um, Lo Wei plays Chief Hong, not Chief Hong, Chief Yang uh, in mm -hmm. the flashback scene. So the director, so if, if anybody wants to know what the director looks like, uh, you know, he, usually the directors <laughs> get cameo here or there. So uh, and uh, this was also one of Cheng Pei Pei's last Shaw Brothers movies. The uh, I think the I think her last one was actually the Lady Hermit, um, but they were I think they were both made in the same year. And then we get uh, and then we, we you know she comes back a couple of years later I think. 
in some of the I think it's uh, what's the movie that we see her in um, I can't remember off the top of my head but it's it's a different production company and uh, you know it's not it's not the same vibe as as before but um, and uh, in fact let me let me just answer that question really quick because it's gonna annoy me if I don't okay so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, she's I, she's just fantastic in this movie. I really uh really enjoyed her. Yeah, I think it's None But the Brave is the next one that we see her in. Um, okay. But uh, uh, and also uh, something else I want to mention is that Lo Wei directed uh, Cheng Pei Pei and a number of other uh, Shaw Brothers films, and that includes uh, Golden Sword, Dragon Swamp, which I think is an outstanding movie. Brothers Five, which is she kind of plays a character similar to Lady Hermit in that one. She's more of like a uh, a master she's not really like the, the main character so much and raw courage i think the golden sword and dragon swamp were excellent movies i really like both of them um they're, they're all good but uh but those two are the ones that i really remember liking um and so i think i think lo Wei and cheng pei pei have good chemistry together when they're yeah. you know yeah i think i think uh i think he's a really good storyteller and that's what she said about him in an interview where she said she at least called him a storyteller. I shouldn't say that she 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 said he was a good one, but she called him a storyteller. And so yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I I think that uh, I think they have a nice. I think good good is implied in that sentence. Well, I was thinking that. back, and I'm not sure. I have to I'd have to re, I'd have to look at the context again. <laughs> she, um, she was calling him a liar. That's well, what she, she was. was comparing him to directors like <laughs> King Hu, and she was very she pra- she had a lot of praise for King Hu. Um, and and her and she contrasted uh, King Hu with um, uh, with with directors like Lo Wei, who she saw as like more focused on story. Um, yeah, this was this was a very story focused movie. I mean, it just the the narrative it just just zips along from scene to scene to scene. It felt yeah, it, uh, it, it felt moves very quickly, cool. doesn't it? I, I it does. I, I have it on DVD, and my DVD is five minutes longer. But I really couldn't find. I think there might be. There's either a little bit more material, or there's a little bit less of the reverse crank. I don't know what it is, but uh, uh, it it didn't seem that different to me on the DVD. So yeah, and the subs are, I think, a little bit different, but that's about it. Um, and uh, and yeah, so. I don't know. Some things that I like about it. Number one, the opening of the movie is essentially a supply run. I think that's there's something about yeah. that that's very charming and also very rooted in sort of just the everyday realities of life. Uh, it just kind of tells you about this. Like you just get a sense of like how uh, it's something that's very easy to gloss over in in modern movies where we don't think about that stuff anymore because we can go to convenience stores. Do you know what I mean? And it's just it's just yeah. it's not always at the forefront of a director's mind. This is a movie where, again, it's done in a time where people might have been more aware of, uh, because like you know, it, you know, th- things weren't as as convened as they are now. But it's still it's not that far back. Um, but the, I feel like there's more pains taken to sort of establish the the baseline realities of the world that the characters live in. Um, yeah, on that note, I'll give you another thing I was impressed with, which was, uh, you know, the, the shadow whip when they're going down into the secret room. When they're going downstairs, it's like he the way he holds the candle with his palm up to like, you know, so his his vision isn't getting distorted by the candle. So he's just seeing the light reflect the candle like, yeah, this is this is someone who knows how to use a candle in the dark. You don't you don't usually see that in movies. That was just a nice little touch there. Yeah, you'll see, you will see that in a lot of Shaw Brothers movies. I should say they do. They do tend to do that. Um, okay, so it's a good, because, good thing I, either way. Well, I think because number one, it's like you say, it stops the glare. But I think visually, it adds something to the movement across the screen. And yeah. so there's a lot of attention paid to that in these movies. These movies, I always feel like they have the look of a silent movie, the way the actors move and do yes. things. And, and again, I don't know if this is the reason, but I do know that a lot of these older movies, you're not actually hearing the actor. And if you are, you're hearing them post-production as they're like adding the voice in over after the fact. So I, I, I often wonder, well, does that mean that, that, that they need to sort of act more like a silent movie star because their voice yeah. isn't being recorded? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's easy to talk about the physicality of these actors when they're doing a martial arts scene or something. But just just when people are standing around talking in his movies, there's so much physicality to the the gestures and everything. I mean, just the, just the dialogue scenes has some some really solid physical acting in them. Yeah, and people will often say how like you know in these movies, one of the, you know like characters, you you don't you don't interpret a good character the same way in a movie like this as you do in like an American movie. And by that, I mean, a lot of it boils down to costume, physical performance, Mm -hmm. more so than, I mean, dialogue can still matter. Backstory can still matter. But a lot of what impresses you as a viewer is sometimes just the way a character is standing in relation to other characters and the clothes they're wearing and how, you know, the makeup, like just everything sort of coming together and tell, they can tell you so much about a character with, 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 with a, with a quick visual cue. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I, it's one of the things I love about this genre. So you, and it's important because you often have a lot of characters and it's really helpful to have that visual cue so that they stand out. Lady Chow Fung was mentioning like one of the things she likes about the costumes in this is, uh, is simple stuff like the Yu Hua is wearing that yellow shirt and that really helps you keep track of Yu Hua throughout the movie. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you yeah, didn't there's, have there's that, really crowded fight scenes in this movie. If we had similar, if everyone was wearing just kind of beige or something, it would, they'd be really hard to track. She also, yeah, and also Lady Chow Fung wasn't here, but she sent me her thoughts, so I want to kind of include them here. She, she, she also really liked Cheng Pei Pei's costume, which I, I have to agree with. I think it's a great costume. Mm-hmm. I've seen people criticize it. Uh, really? I can understand. Yeah, I can understand why people might be. You know, there's there's a sort of a. She's got like a um like a fur cap on her top now. I don't know exactly what you would. It's it's not quite a hat, but it's uh it's it's something I like think a hat. fur cap covers it. Yeah. yeah, and uh and she's got the sort of, I don't know. It's like a it's like a, a I don't know the proper name for it, but it's like a jacket that's very thick and has fur trim, and 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 it's just a very striking costume. I think I think it I think it uh I think it looks very uh, it looks very uh, strong in her physique, and and so and I think it matches the whip. Just something about that look really works. Oh, it matches the setting too. I mean, it yeah. just it, it just you know, I I felt like it was an appropriate thing to her for to be wearing as we're in this snowy mountainous scenery. It just it just added to the it added to the environment. Even when we're on the sets, you know, the set scenes as opposed to the outdoor scenes, it still gave you a feeling of place because she was wearing that. Yeah, I would agree. And a lot of people do have outfits like this in the, uh, you know, not not quite like hers. Like they'll be wearing fur, you know, fur jackets that are like, you know, actual fur. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but but yeah, there's there's uh, it, it so, would definitely look out of place if they were like further south or something. In the, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what do people dislike about it? Oh, I, mean, I think I think I don't know. I just saw people that got annoyed at the, the headgear she was wearing or. Uh, huh. I mean, everybody reacts differently to this stuff. I oh always, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying those yeah. people are terrible people. I'm just, I'm just curious to get a perspective. That's uh, all. Yeah, I don't know. I've just, I've, I've seen people sort of. I think, I think it's striking. I think it's a striking costume choice, and so it doesn't. You know, if you look at a lot, a lot of Cheng Pei Pei movies, there, a, a lot of the stuff she wears is just kind of standard costume, or it's something that's become something that you've seen in other movies a lot. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The way she was dressed in Lady Hermit was striking, but you've also seen that outfit since then in a lot of other characters who have some kind of veil over a hat. And do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is an outfit you haven't really seen that much of. There aren't too many movies that feature this look. Um, in fact, I think in The Golden Sword, she might be wearing something kind of similar. Um, but uh, so so I don't know. But I, But I agree with you. I think it ties it to the sense of place. And again, another point Dion did want to make was that um, she thought that the the winter uh, setting really added to the feel of the movie. She said it made it feel sad and tragic, and 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 it, and it made the uh, you know the the, out, the filming outdoors, the choice to film a lot of those snow scenes outdoors, made it feel more realistic. Um, mm-hmm. Which I would agree with because I felt like I used to when I was a kid, I had a cousin who had a cabin in Maine. And we used to actually, one of the things we did when we went there is we used to make wooden swords. My, my, you know, we, <laughs> This is around the time that Forgotten Realms was big. And so we were making like scimitars so we could be like Drist. 
And we would go into the snow and sword fight with our wooden swords. And so I immediately yeah. was pulled back into that time in my life. And I could feel like the snow on my skin and the, the frost in my nostrils when I'm watching the movie. And I'm thinking, those actors must be so cold. Like they have no <laughs> gloves on and they're wielding swords and the swords are clashing. And, and you can see their, their faces look like red from the cold. And they, they, you, know, you, you can tell that they're experiencing weather conditions. And so uh, I think it really does add to the movie. Uh, you, you, know, you can tell there's a difference between the scenes and the sets and the scenes in the, in the real snow. Um, oh. <laughs> and, and I think that the, you know, like, again, uh, Lady Chow Fung mentioned this, you know, the, the fight scenes must have been pretty tough to do in that environment. That's not, that doesn't seem like an easy, uh, easy uh, uh, place to be when you're trying to, uh, when you're trying to conduct fight choreography. And Yeah, I mean, both, both in front of the camera and just setting up cameras and stuff alone, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an obstacle, definitely. Well, also, if you know anything, like in martial arts, you know, uh, stretching is really important and warming up is really important. Yeah. One, of the, one of the hardest environments to do martial arts in is the cold because you tighten up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, I remember doing winter training and, like, it was, it was miserable. You, you know, that's when pe people tend to get, they tend to pull muscles and stuff in that kind of environment and in that kind of weather. So, uh, so this, I mean, it's definitely injury prone weather as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, th I thought it. I, yeah, I thought the setting looked marvelous. On the fight choreography, I was saying before, I think this really does kind of harken back to sort of the swashbuckle days of Shaw Brothers. Like a lot of those late '60s or uh, mid '60s movies, they have a, sh uh, a swashbuckle type vibe, which I this, like. But... This felt really swashbuckling, mm -hmm. without a doubt. I was thinking the same thing. And, and what I would tell people, if you're not as big of a fan of swashbuckling, understand it's an evolution. Like over time, they have to get from. You know, you don't you don't start out with with um, with uh, with with uh, Iron Monkey. You, it kind of has to work its way to, to that kind of fight choreography. But also the swashbuckling stuff. If you if you focus on the leg work and the and the and, and the footwork and where people are positioning themselves and the muscle work involved, there's a lot of muscle that goes into these fight scenes. Like there's it's it's the kind of fight where people are really pushing against each other at times, and 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 it's and it's and it's athletic in that sense. Um, and also, I mean, if you, if you look at a guy like you Hua in this movie and you compare it to his performance and say, come drink with me, the difference is staggering. Like the, the, the level of, of, uh, physical capability that he's demonstrating in this movie, I think shows a lot of growth from what you, and again, maybe he just wasn't, uh, you know, is, is d directed in this way in come drink with me. But I always kind of assume that there's been this, you can sort of see this growth of him over time and so you know but yeah. and this is a movie where you really see him starting to kind of uh you know like, like just some of those i mean it, again it doesn't look like a modern martial arts movie but you but there's a lot of beats to every every moment in that sort scene. they're not just winging it they're not just sort of you know they're not just kind of waving their swords at each other they're, 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 this all. is choreographed um so you know it is older style but i think there's still I still I really like this style because I think it has a lot. There's a lot of real athleticism in it, and there's also a lot of shots of people's entire bodies in the in the in the scenes. And I and I like it when you get that because you know what the actor is doing physically. And so yeah. as a result, you sometimes catch them getting a little tired or putting their hand <laughs> in the wrong place. But it's because they're they're showing you the whole shebang. You know, they're showing you everything. So uh, so I think it works. Um, and and again, I think that whip, the whip was a great, was really used well in this movie. Uh, yeah, and I, and I was commenting earlier, you know, but it it works. I mean, it works well that it is something you don't see much because it has to be from a plot perspective. I mean, the only reason that everyone thinks that, you know, that the shadow whip has to be the the guy responsible is because he's the one guy who uses a whip. So you know, and then, you know, when when uh. You know, yeah, I mean, it's just, it just relies on the fact that it's a really odd weapon to use. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it in other movies, but just not that many. It was in Lady Hermit they had a whip. In, um, oh, yeah, know, that's the, right. The, yeah, the that's a whip. My But mind, that was, again, that's that's a movie that, that's like that's like her next film. So, that, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% clear on the timing. It either is the next one or it came right before it. But either way, they're close enough that you think one might have influenced the other. Um, Detective D is another movie that has a character that uses a whip. 
Yeah, um, but well, having, lo- having her use the movie two with the whip two movies in a row too, that does go back to your argument that you think they trained with it too, because they're like she spent all this time oh, but, training with a whip. No, but in in, in Lady Hermit, it was another character using a whip. It was, oh, it was. I uh, it was her disciple. Okay. Yeah, it was oh, her disciple. was her disciple. Yeah, I've only seen the movie once, so I, I apologize. No, it's <laughs> not. It's not a. I know, but it's. I just. Uh, it, it, it's a minor detail, but um, but yeah, no, the disciples using the whip in that one, and. Uh, and and yeah that's right i i read the first scene is coming back to me with the disciple now yeah and so so yeah so let me see any any other thoughts on uh aspects of the movie that you you thought were important or interesting uh let's see we've hit all the major points i mean i agree with you on the early scene in the supply run kind of grounding it it like it it does it does give a feel of you know because this is kind of you know, they've had kind of this quiet life, you know, running this kind of, you know, in out in the country for a long time. And it's just being being disrupted. So we get we get a little bit of a taste of it as it gets disrupted. So it uh, it, it gives the uh, the the chaos that outbreaks through the middle of the movie more weight, I think. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I, I highly recommend this movie to pretty much anyone. I mean, it's uh it's it's a great entry point to the genre. I think anyone that already likes these movies that enjoy it, it's it's just solid all the way around. And uh, no, yeah. I, I, did, what did you think of the of the reveal in the middle of the movie? Like when they finally revealed the backstory and all that. Did you did you did you like uh, did you did you uh, enjoy the fact that everything conveniently fell into place, or was it? Sure. No, I, I, it, it, like, I mean, we were talking about the storyteller thing. That's having a great narrative flow. Everything was revealed at the right time. I mean, it all, it, it all just came together. Like, obviously, you, you'd had the clue just a little bit earlier of who the bad guy was before we had the, the backstory handed to us, and it became more obvious. But, uh, you know, it, it gave you just enough time to get suspicious before it gave you the answer. So you got to feel you got to feel smart that it's like, oh, I see where it is going. But you're not sitting there for 20 minutes going, why won't the characters in the movie figure this out? So it was I think it was paced perfectly. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I think it's a it's a very sort of everything just kind of hits right when it needs to hit. And it's it's all perfectly placed and and again yeah. even though some of it's very convenient it's convenient in a good yeah. way. I, I it's love satisfying. He, yeah, I love <laughs> when he sort of you know inadvertently reveals that he's the guy behind it all. You know that was is yeah. a great moment in the movie. Um, yeah, and uh, and 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 it's also one that like it's a mistake he made, but it's also a mistake she made herself earlier in the film when she you know says to. Uh, to the Hugh Hua character, you know, what has my uncle ever done? What has Uncle Fung ever done to you? And then, yeah. you know, it's like, ah, so he is your uncle. It's uh-huh. kind of similar, <laughs> similar thing. Uh, I did want to mention uh, Lady Chao Fung in her list of notes. She she mentioned the actors that she she liked. She you know she said Cheng Pei Pei was great. She loved Ku Fung as the villain. You know, he, uh, you know she's, mm. he's always a good villain. I, I would agree with that. I think Ku Fung is he's good at he can, he's a very versatile actor he can play anything we were talking about his versatility on display in um the the iron triangle movie that we saw where there was the uh, uh the muay thai and um yeah and, and and i think uh i think here he's a he's a really effective villain um she liked yeah. you as the hero I, I think he makes a good 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 guy he's he's got like a He's also a good bad guy. I've seen him as a he, he. I've seen him as a bad guy in movies, and he can be effective as that too. Especially older Yuhua. When Yuhua gets like in about ten years or eight years from this movie, he becomes very effective at at playing more mysterious <laughs> characters. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think I think he's a very likable person in the uh, in general, just when he's acting and so. Yeah, um, well, he has that bearing thing we were talking about. I mean, you just when you see him in the first scene, you're like, "Oh, this guy's a hero." He, yeah. he just pulls it off. <laughs> and, and she said, uh, "Tian Fung, great to see him as the hero slash scapegoat." I think it's interesting because I feel like he's an actor who he can easily go either way. You, you can he can he can easily be the villain or he can easily be the yeah. good guy, and 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 that's one of the things that makes him so good in this role because his character is. You know, until the end, you don't really know. So, 
Yeah, I'll say going back to you say, saying about Ku Fong, how he can play either. It's like he he easily at the midpoint of this movie could be one of those characters they'd been at odds with, but it turns around they they work things out, yeah. and it's like oh we're friends now, we're gonna work together. It's like both having both those characters be able to leap other any way at either point makes the movie hang together to the midpoint when we start to actually find out the truth. Yeah, I would I would agree with that 100%. And I think I think again it's you know those two actors are really good choices for those roles. Mm-hmm. Um, and they and and again you you see enough Shaw Brothers movies even if you don't know the names when I'm mentioning them you will know who these people are because they you know yeah. uh, you know there are faces <laughs> that you just, it, it's like watching a Mel Brooks movie there are faces that you are just going to recognize over time. And, yeah. uh, and Goof I'm not. Film. I'm not up on all the names of actors in this genre. But, but I, them, as right? soon as these guys popped up, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 you really start to notice them after a bit, and then uh, and then and then you start paying more attention to the names, and then uh, yeah, you know, it's a uh, um, but uh, but yeah, again, I, I I I reviewed this movie a while back on the blog, and uh, you know, and and I and I don't even remember what I said about it then, but I'm sure I you know uh, spoke well of it, and. Uh, I, I though I do recall I misspelling uh, Lo Wei's name at one point, but um, but I think that uh, I think this is a good movie to watch. It's uh, it's on Amazon Prime, so you can easily watch it if you have access to that. It's also available in DVD, I believe. I I I I, I got my copy a while back, so I don't know. Sometimes these things become like a thousand dollars when they get like rare, but I don't think it's reached that that level yet. So I think it's probably still like a actual regular price. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think I mean it's it's definitely not the greatest Cheng Pei Pei movie, but it's a good Cheng Pei Pei movie. And I yeah. and 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 I think uh, you know again we Cheng Pei Pei is an outstanding performer. And I went through a phase where I just had to watch every single one of her movies, no matter what it was. And this is one of the movies of hers that I saw that I remembered. Like, I really remembered this one. Some of the other ones kind of, you remembered moments, but you mixed them. Like, they kind of got blurred together. And this was one of the ones that really stood out. Uh, in, in large part because the setting is so different and the, the whip is so different. But also because it had this cool story. And, uh, and so I think, I think it's, it's worth checking out. And I think, uh, I think you know, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, Lady Xiaofeng hasn't been able to be here the past two episodes. But but this the whole idea that we're sort of rolling with this this month. We're trying to do uh, strong female characters. So I think, you know, even if you don't watch the Shadow Whip, go check, a, you know, check a Cheng Pei Pei movie out there. Uh, yeah, she's, she's yeah. a very impressive physical performer, especially for the period that she's she's doing movies in. Um, and uh, also next week, we are going to be doing Yes, Madam. Which, uh, which is a movie I'm really excited to do. It's a little outside, you know, sometimes we do more modern movies. This is a much more modern movie. It's a mid 80s Michelle Yeoh film with uh, Cynthia Rothrock as well. And it's, uh, I think it's, uh, the, 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 the stunt work is staggering in that movie. It, it is, it, it, it's a really cool film. So if you haven't seen Yes, Madam, try to check it out if you can find it. I don't think this one's available on Prime, but it's 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 worth buying. It's it's worth getting this one on Blu-ray or DVD. Uh, if you like sort of if you like like Jackie Chan style movies like Police Story and stuff like that, this is it's totally right up there for you. And uh and definitely, you know, participate with us. If you if you you know, watch the movie, you know, listen to the podcast. You can send us thoughts before the podcast if we, you know, if we have time, we might mention them. Uh we do like to hear from people between and we and occasionally we take requests. I have I've gotten some requests for reviews and I'm slowly working my way through some of the reviews people have requested. And I think we could easily incorporate that into our discussions if people really want to see something. So, um, so definitely keep in touch with us. And again, we'll be back on next Friday with, uh, with yes, madam, uh, Adam and I are also going to be on Wednesday doing Outland. And, um, Mm -hmm. and I think this Sunday we hopefully will have game lab. We have to double check on it, but it should be maybe just me and Rob. I'm not sure. Uh, but we will be doing Game Lab on, on Sunday, most likely. And so uh, until then, we will see you later.